All right, everybody, welcome to back to the Talking Average Fitness Podcast. As always, I am your Florida-bound host, Mr. Samuel Burns, joined by my frozen in the great white north compatriot, Mr. Kevin McCarthy. Kevin, how are you today, sir? I'm doing wonderful, Sam. How are you today? I'm doing great. We're the, I was complaining last week we had very, very cold temperatures for Florida, and it's now it feels a little bit more like Florida, so I'm a, I'm a very happy camper over here. Um, yeah, there you go. So we're... We are chit-chatting before we hit record, and then we are like, well, we better start recording this. Well, one of the many things that we have on our list of stuff to discuss is this concept of for time or not for time, right? And um, There's a lot of ways that you could come about this, but you were just kind of like giving a little backstory, and I think this backstory is a really good mm-hmm. introduction to the topic. So if you would just like yeah. rewind and start from the beginning, what you were just talking about here. Yeah. So, um, you know, when, when Sam says for time or not for time, it's just basically it's like, are you doing your workout for time against the clock in some way, shape or form? Um, or are you just kind of like disregard the clock? You're just cruising through whatever your workout is. Um, yeah. I don't know. I forget how long ago it was. It was tail end of last year in the fall at some point. Uh, Dave Castro had posted something on Instagram that he was like, I did, and I can't remember what the workout was, but I did this workout and just went not for time. Like just didn't put it against the clock. Wasn't, you know, Hey, I'm going to try and get this time type thing. Just here's the workout four rounds of this, this, and this, and I'm just going to do it. And so then upon him posting that, uh, Max El Haj, who is the owner of training think tank, Um, and one of their head coaches down there then kind of like reposted Dave's post or shared on a story or something and asked the question, if it's not for time, is it still technically considered CrossFit? And his reasoning was in the level one, in the the level one seminar for CrossFit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. within the methodology, there's a big emphasis put on, we either use for time or like AMRAPs or some sort of a time constraint to try and drive intensity. Um, and that's how we kind of measure progress and measure, or it's one of the measurables that we can use to kind of quantify our fitness and quantify progress. And that act of kind of using time to quantify things is very integral in the methodology for CrossFit. So he was just asking the question, if it's not, if you're doing something not for time, is it technically still CrossFit methodology? Which I think is a great question. Um, The funny part is if you're, if you're a fan of like, you know, grabbing some popcorn and going through the comments, you can, you know, when people make the joke that CrossFit's a cult, you can see just how, wow, there was a big, as soon as he posted that, the amount of internet people, how dare you slander our Lord and savior, Dave Castro um, (laughs) was incredible. Um, Oh Yeah. So some funny stuff in the, in the comments there, but I thought, I thought it was a good question. I mean, you'd be very hard pressed to argue that Max El Haj isn't a smart dude. He understands sure. physiology really well. Yeah. Um, he's a brilliant coach. He does some amazing stuff at the think tank down there with his athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, it's very hard pressed to be like, ah, it's just some idiot on the internet, like just saying stuff like he's a smart dude. Right. It's a good, it's a, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, so we're going to dive into that question and kind of that topic is, you know, for time or not for time, does it matter? Right. I think, so I love your description, um, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of setting some context, you know, and anybody who's gone into a CrossFit gym knows this, right? Typically it's a big row clock. It's three feet wide. Mm -hmm. It sits on the wall, beeps, um, yeah. if you were around 10 years ago to finish your workout, you'd yell time. Um, and hand to God, I did that too. My very first CrossFit workout. And then notice yeah. that nobody else did it. Never again. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's really interesting. I think the, the idea of timing things of bring that time element into stuff is a, correlate of intensity absolutely Mm -hmm. in the Mm -hmm. sense that um having a way to measure and quantify time in a workout allows us to be 
accurate with quantifying the power output, right? And when mm -hmm. we when I say power output, I'm not just talking about how you feel. I'm talking about the equation that is used, obviously. Yep. So mm -hmm. your force times distance divided by your time. You can't get that equation. You can't get that figure without time being component. Mm -hmm. and, and if I remember correctly, Dave's response was um, something along the lines of, you know, CrossFit isn't just for time, right? CrossFit mm -hmm. is how and why we do the things that we do. Right. Um, and so I can do a workout mm -hmm. and so long as I am bringing an appropriate intensity to the workout, um, it probably still quantifies it, or pardon me, qualifies as CrossFit. Now, mm -hmm. you'd be hard pressed to prove your output um mathematically for sure you know right. if you did <clears throat> um, if you did open 12.1 and it just did an amrap of burpees but you didn't set a seven minute clock chances are you'd want to quit way before seven minutes you know if you're just like ah, I'm like after, do burpees after 30 seconds yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna go until yeah. I don't want to go. I want to. I don't want to go anymore. Um, <laughs> I did one burpee. <laughs> um, but I like like four that, felt easy, but six where, felt impossible. Yeah, right. Um, to that point of where like to, that that response from Dave on social media, like that's a really cool um, kind of uh, connection to. I, I forget which documentary it was in. One of the many cross documentaries. It might have been the 2015 games one, or it might've been uh, Rich's movie, um, the Froning movie. One of those two um, where they talked a little about that. Cause normally when people think CrossFit, and this is a big thing, like in 2012 to 2014, 15, when we're seeing like this massive, you know, upswing in performances at the games, there was a big, big argument thrown out there. Like Rich would post a video of himself training and it was like him doing heavy snatches Right. And people would be like, oh, well, that's not CrossFit because people thought CrossFit is 21, 15, nine thruster and pull up. Like it's, it's the couplets the and triplets. It's the Met, the Met yeah. cons, right? Like that's what CrossFit is. And if you're doing heavy back squats, well, you're not doing CrossFit, you're just lifting. Um, right. And, and that was kind of, you know, how people thought about it then. And, and the argument mm -hmm. that was made against games athletes is like, you know, Rich has won the CrossFit games, not, not doing CrossFit. Um, and, you know, Rich said his piece, so it might've been during Rich's movie, honestly. And, and, I think and then so. Dave kind of, Dave kind of answered it in a really eloquent way as he was like, you have to take a, like, take a bigger picture, like more of a bird's eye view of what's going on. He was like, yeah. the, the thing that kind of defines what, you know, CrossFit is, is kind of the intent of it. And where it comes back to is trying to increase your work capacity across broad time and modal domains. And that's the ultimate yes. goal of the program, right? So yes. if we're trying to increase your work capacity, you can achieve that in multiple ways and you have to work on certain things to like kind of bring up areas of weakness. So yes. he was like, okay, so if you look at like small picture, he's just doing snatches and people would be like, oh, well, that's not CrossFit. He's just Olympic weightlifting. It's like, we'll take a bigger picture, see what the, what the ultimate goal is. Is he just snatching or is he working on his snatches to try and ultimately increase his work capacity. And it's like yeah. that kind of brings into frame like what the what the goal of that training is um, yeah. and kind of what would put it in the CrossFit or not bucket um, right. based on that. So the fact that he gave that answer in an interview in 2014 and then also kind of like stuck to it, like basically gave the same answer on Instagram, which I, I believe you're right. It was, it, was, it was phrased something like that where it's like, hey, as long as I'm bringing sufficient intensity and the ultimate goal is using this workout to increase my work capacity, but maybe today I just don't have it mentally, physically, emotionally to put a clock on it. If you're still trying to move the needle on that work capacity, you're still pursuing fitness in a, a CrossFit sense, yeah. like in, in the way that yeah. we'd like to for CrossFit. So um, I thought that that is a great answer. Um, mm -hmm kind of like it it's not so much what are you doing on the day because you can do plenty of stuff that's like not for time it's for quality 
yeah. but it's with the ultimate goal. It fits within CrossFit programming because it's the ultimate goal of trying to move the needle on your work capacity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I, I, you know, hats off to you for stepping out and adding nuance and taking that big picture view on this. I mean, this is one of those things where, to your point about us being a cult, sure, we're a cult. And <laughs> we qualify as a cult, be, I think, because we come into the doors of CrossFit, you know, wherever you are, and you have this life-changing experience. Mm-hmm. And through that experience, you're like, you want to go to all your friends and shake them and be like, do, do you know about this thing? Let me tell you about this thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, it feels weird if you are on the outside and haven't yep. experienced that thing that changed yep. your life. And so we get that. But there is a there is a, a breadth and depth to the methodology applied here. And it might fall, like the big picture of you might fall outside of the bounds of your specific experience. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's not mm-hmm. a bad thing. It's just a, just a thing. Um, and Pat Sherwood, ta- or not Pat Sherwood, uh, Pat Barber talked about this. You know, If you came into CrossFit in like 2012, Mm-hmm. What you experienced as CrossFit is another person's version and bias and their interpretation of what they experienced, which is a a version and bias and interpretation of what the person who presented to them is. It's that game of telephone. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you might be like seven generations, you know, in like uh, seven Kevin Bacon's removed from. <laughs> The person who, you know, or, you know, who from Greg essentially, yeah. Um, and if we take this really broad, golf carts everywhere down here in the villages. Uh, if we take this really big and broad view of fitness, you know, and why we're doing the thing that we're doing, something we've talked about so many times, mm-hmm. we can find a place for a lot of things that don't include a clock, you know, <clears throat> Olympic weightlifting stuff where it's for load. You know, anytime you record a back yeah. squat, you know, if you're doing five by five back squats, no one gives a shit how long it takes. You know, I, as a coach, I give a shit because I need you to finish in a certain amount of time so I can get you out and get the next class in. Yeah. But really I want to provide you enough time to reach an appropriate intensity intensity Mm -hmm. for that day being defined by an appropriate loading for the Mm -hmm. rep scheme and for the movement um which is why you can't do so which is why you can't do a five by five back squat and then helen right you you just not can't and not read and reach the appropriate intensity right you're gonna have to short change something absolutely absolutely and i'll i'll touch base on that you know a little bit um we'll come back to that thing I, um, for quality work is, is another great example of that. <clears throat> and we see a lot of this in gymnastics work. Um, it, it's sometimes programmed as accessory stuff, but dot com's getting pretty savvy. They will, um, include it and it's just the day's work and, mm-hmm. um, you know, timed holds, uh, above a bar done for quality rest as needed, um, uh, holding positions or sets of reps of something. Um, mm. and you just, you don't look at the clock. It's not the purpose of it, you know, get connected with your body, connect your mind and your body and try to move as well as possible. Mm-hmm. And this is just my opinion, but anybody who doesn't think that that's going to move the needle somehow is missing the boat yeah, in terms of I, like an understanding. Now, and I wouldn't say do that all the time because yeah. you'd be missing the boat then as well. Yep. I, you know, a great example of this, which um, I, I don't think, and maybe there's an affiliate out there that can prove me wrong. Um, if there is, if, if, if anyone here is listening and you're like, yep, we've done this at our gym let us know because we'll give your gym 72,000 shout outs because I think it's amazing. But if, but if you look at the, uh, again, it's it's within the the level one, uh, manual, the, the programming guide, 
mm -hmm. right? Where it's giving you like, you know, you have your three modalities, monostructural, weightlifting, gymnastics. Yeah. It, it basically gives you like a template pattern of how you can program. Now, it, you know, there's GW. So many, MGW. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yes. And then, and then starts with W, WG. And it's like, so that goes down, it has a pattern to yes. it. Um, however, they give examples of mm -hmm. what you would program on those days. Now you each yeah. three day cycle had a single modality day. You had, so it's three on one off for those of you guys that don't know CrossFit programs and, and the, you know, the schedule that works the best as Greg had found was three days of training and then one day of rest and repeat mm -hmm. that cycle for the rest of forever. Add in an item. Yep. It's, it's at odds with a seven day work week, which is why people have swapped things up and, and, you know, the closest thing to it is what most competitor programs have switched to, which yeah. is three on one off, two on one off, mm -hmm. but however works for you, whatever works anyways, coming back to like three on so of the three days of training. Again, you went through the cycle of a single modality day, a mm -hmm. couplet and a triplet. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's, there's three different kind of like different combinations you can do for that on the, the template sheet. Now for each three or three day cycle, there was always mm -hmm. one single modality day. Yeah. So in one of them, there was just a weightlifting day, back squat five yeah. by five, boom, yeah. done. The next one, run a 10 K, fuck yeah. me sideways. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <Yes>. So, <laughs> um, so then, then the last one, single modality day was just a gymnastics day. And you know what they mm -hmm. had programmed on their template sheet? What? 40, 45 minutes of handstand practice. Oh, no. So I, so here's what's beautiful no. about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so here's what's beautiful about this. 45 minutes of handstand practice. Now <clears throat> we're going to like assume mm -hmm. that the trainer, the coach that's leading the class has done their research. They have their progressions. Yep. They're fucking on it. This but is a you're gonna planned, but, but, structured yeah, class. planned, structured. We are just going to practice gymnastics today, and yeah. like the goal is to get all of you as inverted as possible in the most perfect position as possible, and that's yes. the only goal for that class. And then once we have your options dialed in, you maybe have like, hey, we're gonna practice this bit for a bit and this bit, whatever the structure is. We are gonna spend forty-five minutes practicing. And again, it's, it's not on a clock. It's not how many mm -hmm. rounds can you do? It's you're finding your perfect position or the perfect position for you in your part of the progression. Hold for as long as you can yeah. rest as needed repeat. And if you yeah. go through five sets, if you go through 10 sets, whatever that is, we are practicing handstands today. Yeah. Now, Again, if any affiliate out there that's listening anywhere in the cosmos can say, yep, we've done that or something similar to that, where it's just 45 minutes of gymnastics practice, then mm -hmm. bravo hats off to, to you. you. The hats off to you. You're fighting the good fight and your people are probably infinitely better at the, you know, frustrating gymnastics skills than yeah. everybody else who just pushes gymnastics to the side because doing barbell stuff is sexier. Um, yeah. But if you're approaching that the appropriate way, coming back to Sam's thing, if you'd be hard pressed to say that doesn't move the needle, mm. if you're like, yep, yeah, I'm going to against, I'm going to do a, you know, I can't freestanding handstand, but I'm going to go do a, a wall facing nose and toes hold. And I'm going to be Ooh. in a hollow position. Yes. My shoulders are open. I'm pressing through the floor and my biceps are to my ears. Yep. And it's literally just the tip of my nose and the tip of my toes touching the wall. And that's it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to hold that position as perfectly as humanly possible for 45 minutes. I'm not working out again for the rest of the week. Right. I'm like, I'm, I asked me to hold a 45 pound bar overhead. It ain't <laughs> happening. I can't do yeah. it. Um, like you would be fully cooked Yeah. because if you are truly striving for, and here's the magic word, a virtuous mm. handstand hold. And mm, in the pursuit preach. of that, you're going to be, you're going to be, toast you're gonna be cooked there, there's yes 
plenty of ways you can apply intensity. And I think when people hear intensity, they're like, I have to feel like I've been kicked in the dick and just metabolically <laughs> broken. <laughs> just metabolically broken. But sure. that's not the case. That, that is a type of intensity, but intensity can also look like focus. Yeah. I'm focused on this. And again, intensity, I'm pushing, even though I'm not moving, I'm pushing through the floor and through mm-hmm. my arms and shoulders and midline and everything as hard as I can that is a different kind of intensity that will move the needle for you. When everyone got smashed in the face in 2021 with wall walks and everyone's like wall walks, easy wall walks and double unders easiest open workout ever. I think 0.1% of the human population actually finished it. So clearly wall walks that are considered a scaled movement. I know. uh, (laughs) everything uh, like this could be a whole episode in itself anything that's considered a scaled movement is way harder than like the <laughs> rx version <laughs> ring rows are infinitely harder than kipping pull-ups i, I right? said what i said i will be taking no uh comments at this time right um, but it's like you want to get better at wall walks like if your handstand is phenomenal if you can do that nose and toes wall facing handstand beautifully then that yeah. wall walk standard is peanuts it's easy yeah because you can get there, right? Yeah. So that's going to move the needle on so many things. Your overhead mobility, your midline strength, your overhead stability, um, yeah. like your mental toughness to like to hold that position and, and fight against all the different parts of your body that you didn't know existed that are burning now. <laughs> it's like snatches become easier. Overhead squats become easier. Like wall walks become easier. Um, dumbbell push press becomes easier. Mm-hmm. Um when everyone gets their face kicked in by double dumbbell overhead walking lunges. Oh, oh baby. It's like all that stuff becomes better because you worked on something for quality and not for time. And you worked on your positions. And so like, you can't tell me that doing 45 minutes of handstand practice isn't valuable and doesn't move the needle on your fitness. And if you have yeah. an argument, I'd love to hear it because I will promptly tell you why you're wrong. Yeah. So I don't know. I know I, I said a lot of things there that made Sam happy. So I just get <laughs> Well, so <laughs> I'm, I, I will, I'll, I'll open by freely admitting my bias. Um, yeah. I had a, I had a life changing experience when I took my gym, when I took my gymnastics course and mm-hmm. um, it was, it was as important to me as my, as my level one was, it was a fundamental shift in how I approach thinking about gymnastics. And, um, I had a couple, I've been so blessed to have a couple experiences like that. Um, and some of them outside of the realm of fitness where I go and I work with a specialist who just totally upsets my apple cart mentally, um, when it comes to this particular practice or a particular practice, and I walked away with a confidence and a um, with a deeper understanding that anyone who knows me like before I took that course and after I took that course knows that I, I just coached differently, period. Um, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm very biased. I'm very pro-virtuous gymnastics, right? Um, I, I also, I love that. First of all, MGW, MGW, that model. Yeah. I think would be, I love that model. I think they're Mm -hmm. so, even though it's quote unquote, not varied using that simple template, you can do some phenomenal programming and it doesn't have to be forever. I would, you know, if you, if you do the programming at your box, pick a month, Mm -hmm. pick a month and just do that and yep. just see what it feels like to do that. And I, yeah. I know that when I had to fill in programming for affiliates that I've worked at in the past, that is a favorite model of mine. It works. I can guarantee variance almost every single time in a way that that affiliate is not used to by using mm-hmm. that template. Yep. I also, I love that you picked the 45 minutes hands now walk practice and we made some assumptions um at the very beginning where it's like we're going to assume the coach has got a plan they've got it dialed in it's going to be you know great class yeah 
that is maybe the biggest assumption that we made in this yep. little discourse so far. Yep. That to execute at a high level on a class like that takes so much. And oh, it's so much it's of so, so hard. Things. Yeah. Right. Cause you have to you be, know? if you, if you want to get the most value out of, out of that as, as a coach, yeah. if, if you're a member and you're like, look, I'm looking for my money's worth today and you're right. a coach and you're like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go earn my fucking paycheck right here. Yeah. You have, you have to have your plan and not only that, but it's not just, okay, I've taught you, you know, different options. We can do a handstand hold on a box. We can do a pike hold over here. We can yeah. get on the wall or we can practice some freestanding stuff. There's your four options. Have at it guys. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then me as, as the coach, I just sit there, sip my coffee or my right. vodka, whichever time of day it is. Um, or country. And, and <laughs> that too. Um, <laughs> and just, and just let the members go. It's like, that's yeah. not the move. It's, you know, you have to be on it. You have to yeah. be cruising around as Denise would say, you're like a hawk mm-hmm. cruising around giving people value, helping them out, like, you know, tweaking things here and there, ask for more from your people, like ask for more. They won't get any less fit by you asking for more. And so get on them, ask for more, provide different insights and tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. And like, you got to pull for for that class to work. And, And I think this is why a lot of affiliates don't program stuff like that is for two Can't. reasons. Well, yeah, <clears throat> is for two main reasons, at least in my mind. Number one, when people pull up sugar wad, what's the workout for tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Uh, 45 minutes of handstands. Stupid. I'm not going tomorrow. Tomorrow's my rest day then. Right. And, open, and or open gym. Just, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and two, like your coaches aren't like I, I don't want to be mean, but I will. Coaches aren't good enough to provide enough value within that class to yeah. make it a viable option. Because yeah. here's the thing. If your members know that your coaches are going to bring the most amount of value every single time they go to the gym, they're not going to skip mm-hmm. the stuff that looks boring. Yeah. Like the like greatest example is the 5K run day. Everyone's like, I can just literally walk out the front door of my house, go for a 5K run, and then call it good. I don't mm-hmm. need to go to class. Yeah. But if they know that my coach at the gym are ballers, they're amazing, mm-hmm. and they always make things fun, engaging, interesting. I learn something. You know, they always bring their A game and the utmost value. Yeah. Then your members aren't going to skip those days right? Then you're not going to yeah. have the two person class on run a 5k. You're going to have a full class. Cause they're like, I'm getting my money's worth today. Right. Right. Cause the coach is on it. Yeah. Bring that same idea to that gymnastics day. That's now a viable class. Right. They're like, okay. I know that like, you no, know, I'm, I'm maybe not the best upside down, but I know that Sam is, going to make it fun he's going to make it interesting i'm going to learn something he's good looking uh you know <laughs> i'm sold i'm sold i'm, coming to class. I'm there <laughs> I'm, I'm there I just, i'm there um and so if you have that going for you as your fit if your coaches are always on it and providing that value then like that now becomes a viable class and even though it looks yeah. boring on paper 45 minutes of handstand practices your members won't skip if they know they're going to get the value yeah. um so that's the really, really hard thing as yeah. an affiliate and as coaches and for, for something like that to work, um, which is why I, you don't ever say, I mean, I don't know of any affiliates currently that program just a single modality gymnastics day. There might be like a workout that has primarily gymnastics movements. And during your warm up, there's a good amount of like skill work in there. But like once you've gone through your skill work, you're then doing a uh, Metcon or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, and and I feel, I feel for affiliates. I feel, mm-hmm. you know, cause I know, I know people who I know individual coaches or affiliate owners who they know the value. They mm-hmm. like, I, we, we had this conversation and they might be sitting on the other side listening being like, yes, 
yes, you know, yeah. you're speaking my language. Yeah. Um, and they also know that for better or for worse, for one reason or another, the coaches who are in their affiliate, coaches, plural as a whole, cannot execute on a class like that at that level. And, and to be honest, that like something like that, that would, I've been, I've been coaching professionally. Is this 2023 now? Last time I checked. <laughs> God bless me. I've been coaching professionally <laughs> full time for five years. And yeah. I, I have done only CrossFit and I have been so blessed to work with some of the best coaches in the world. Mm -hmm. That class would take everything I have as mm -hmm. a coach and everything yep. I have learned to, to get the response that I want mm -hmm. from the people who might walk in. Oh yeah. I like, if that's the class, 45 minutes of handstand practice, you're like, all right, let's get right. it. Um, yeah. you know, I, I have, I have all the stations set up. I, I have like a full down to the millisecond plan of like, here's yeah. what this is going to do. Um, I'd honestly probably run that class. Like, I don't know if like in sections make sense, but like, okay, we're going to work on this part of the handstand. Here's some different options. Let's work on this. Yeah. And then we're going to work on this part of a handstand, a few different options. Let's work on this. So it's kind of like, leading a little portion and then giving them some time to work for a little bit and then kind of bring them back in, work on something else, work on it for a little bit, bring them back in and kind of like, you know, piece together the parts of the handstands at, at, you know, by the end, the last portion of class, we're like, okay, now we have, we're taking a, you know, 15 to 20 minute chunk. And like, here's the entire handstand. Let's put all mm -hmm. the pieces together and, you know, work on this. Um, that's probably how I would lead it. I would, I would coach, my four classes that day. And then I would need like three to five business days to just like hibernate and like regenerate yeah. my brain, my brain. <laughs> well, and, and to bring this back to our original topic, which was, yeah. is that CrossFit or not? You better believe that that's CrossFit. You better believe it is. You, you darn know, right it is. Greg Glassman as, <laughs> as a, as a ringsman and as a gymnast, like he absolutely would have had a focus of mm -hmm. something like that and would have executed on something like yeah. that. Um, was talking about it with the, we're doing a lesson plan group uh, with the coach development program right now. <clears throat> and we were talking about the original workout, nasty girls. If, if anyone hasn't seen that, go back and watch that, right? Watch that video. Um, watch that video. It's, it's like, so good. It's three rounds for time. 50 air squats, seven ring muscle ups, and 10 hang power cleans, 135 mm -hmm. and 95. Yes, sir. I don't know another human who has done air squats that fast. Like, come out the gate so hot as those three <laughs> ladies did. <laughs> they came and, out like there's smoke coming off that fucking med ball. First off, right? there was, just as a little note, if you weren't doing CrossFit at this point, when like a lot of these benchmarks came out and were filmed, like yep. the medicine ball was like your target for depth on the squat. So yep. I remember Josh Bridges talking about like, cause he did Fran in 202 and it was like yes. the first time anyone had seen like what eventually evolved into a butterfly pull up. I don't know what he was doing. He was basically just like kind of the movement frog of it kips. wasn't quite a butterfly. Well, yeah, pretty much like a frog kip. It like wasn't quite a gymnastic kip pull up. It yep. wasn't quite a butterfly pull up. It was like somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. but that's, that, that's kind of what spurred the evolution to a butterfly pull-up is people learning, okay, he did it a bit faster going like this, let's try it. And now what we see is a refined butterfly pull-up. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was doing his thrusters off the medicine ball and he was talking about Fran and they're like, is that the fast, fastest frame you've ever done? He was like, oh yeah, by far. And yeah. they were like, why do you think it was fast? He was like, cause I use that med ball as a fucking spring. Like you just bounce your butt off it and like, off you go. I was yeah. like, <laughs> You're darn fucking right. Oh, it was, anyway, there was smoke coming off those medicine balls, and those ladies were going. It was amazing. Oh, I know. And then they go to the they go to the ring muscle ups. None of them are kipping ring muscle ups. They're all strict. no, no. It, which is why. Well, the, and the rings also because I feel like, and this might just be me. I feel yeah. like a strict ring muscle up is easier if you can keep your feet in front 
like or like at least mm-hmm. directly underneath you it right. aids the turnover yeah you have the yeah. more of a counterbalance for turnover the rings were at like their head height <laughs> so yes. they're like they're getting themselves set they're coming down and they're like knees are hanging like just off the they've floor they've got to tuck their heels yeah, back behind their butt. heels back and they're trying like do it i'm like that's so much yeah. harder oh i'm like no, so hats no, none of you crossfitters are hard nowadays that was some hard stuff right there well gosh and this is and this is why you know you know anyway nasty girls amazing go watch it amazing. like we're doing that workout monday that's the class we're going here at tilt on monday yeah dig it um it's so good so like if you came, like nobody could watch Amy Sakamoto do Nasty Girls and then like take away Annie's time. And it, like if Annie had done it that fast and like at the end she never called time and no one ever told her how fast it was, nobody can tell me that what she did wasn't CrossFit. Right. Right. If you're you like, know? you know, she, she doesn't have a clock going, so she's not timing it, but she's going as fast as she can on all three movements finding and, appropriate and like push, yep that's moving the needle on her fitness like the only Absolutely. difference is you don't have that time marker to when like either to figure out what your power output was or quantify mm-hmm. it at, at, for that version or yep. if you retest that benchmark what was my time last time if you don't know like yep. then you don't have something to like benchmark yourself against right oh well. and from a like from a data acquisition stand. And so like, this is, you know, coming back to like, why do we do what we do? We do what we do to improve work capacity across broad time and modal domains, which is our definition mm-hmm. for fitness, right? Mm-hmm. The use of metrics like distance, load, and time enable us to quantify our progress, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but All of that comes back to take a large load, move it a long distance and quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And quick is a relative term, just like intensity is a relative term. I'm asking you to move fast. Let's take a a Metcon as an example. I'm asking you to move fast. I'm asking you to move a load, a given distance. You know, it could be your body weight. It could be a barbell or a dumbbell or a kettlebell. And I'm asking you to do so multiple repetitions and as quickly as possible such that we are right at the bleeding fucking edge where your technique is breaking down, right? Mm-hmm. That's, you know, do I want you to move well and go fast? The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that is absolutely CrossFit. And and we've seen even, uh, even before that Dave Castro thing, Pat Barber is, not Pat Barber, damn it, now I mixed him up again, Pat Sherwood. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lin, the programmer for Lynchpin, yeah. and if if you don't follow Lynchpin, you've done Pat Sherwood workouts because you've probably done a dot com workout or an open workout, mm-hmm. and he has sprinkled in some torture for you in those in those areas. He loves it. Oh, uh, he it's loves so good. Not for time, and it's he does. And I know personally, like every once in a while, <sighs> I don't want to think about a clock. I like if I think about a clock, I'm going to psych myself up, and I'm not going to do this workout, and I need to do this workout. Yeah, you know. So I'll go in and I'll I'll pick three movements, one from each modality, and try to make them complementary and or non-conflicting and try to move with something that feels like intensity for me on that day. And I mm-hmm. will not look at the clock after. Um, Thrusters pull up like, echo bike. <laughs> Gross. You're, you're welcome. <clears throat> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> 27, 21, 15 thrusters, <laughs> echo bike pull up. Um, oh, God. What didn't they did a workout like that at Wadapalooza one year and everybody was thrown up at the end? It was wild. It was like, it was 21, 15. It, yeah, it was like 21, 15, 9. Uh, it was like at the, it was like the elite and RX divisions at Wadapalooza. Mm-hmm. It was a just, uh, I forget what year it was, 2019 maybe. Gross. It was 21, 15, 9 of, it was either echo bike or assault bike, one of those, one of those, not a concept yep. two. Um, yep. so 2159 assault bike calories, thrusters at 135 95 and chest of our pull-ups. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Gross. I, uh, it makes me think of acid bath from Dubai a couple of years oh ago. Oh my God. That word, that honestly, like, did you, <laughs> I forget who it was. 
<laughs> you walk like people trying to get across the finish line. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Because <laughs> it went it uh, went ski row bike, didn't it? That yes, was the order. Yes, of it. it was okay. ski row bike. Yeah, it was five hundred, five hundred thousand. So yep. it so you're five five hundred meters skier. You're cranking, and it has to be a sprint. If yes. you're a high level athlete on all three of those machines, you're holding like a mid one thirties pace for all three of those, which is just insane. But they're like going through, you see them ski, they hop on the rower and it's like, you can build up some solid, like, you know, leg bite on a rower as you're going Mm -hmm. through. And like, this might be a real hot take. The rower, if done properly is, can be worse than any of the bikes. I said what I said. I believe that. Yeah, hundred percent. I I don't know if I, like some other people believe that, but if you if you're like I, going for it on the rower, I, I would say bio, biomechanically, up. like the quarter extremity yeah. motion yeah. that can yeah. be included and yeah. in it should be included in a rower, yeah, absolutely outpaces the amount of damage that can be done on an echo bike. Oh, hundred percent. It's like you hop on yeah. an echo bike. Okay, your legs burn. You're out of breath. Cool. Sure. You go on a you go on a rower. You put out. I question all of my life choices. Yes. Yeah. Horrible. Now, you can make yourself feel like that on an echo anyway, but you know, yeah, right. I, your, your point is well taken. And I so feel like it's a lot easier to like, just hop on an echo or an assault bike and kind of like not do nothing, but kind of do nothing. Um, yeah. and still kind of just like, you know, meander your way through your calories or distance. Whereas like on the right. rower, like if you, if you're going to go, you gotta, you gotta go. It's, it's really difficult to kind of do nothing on a rower. Well, and so um, if you were going to do acid bath, 500, yep. 500,000, and you do acid bath in six minutes, you know, that's, that's not terrible. That's a two minute 500 on yeah. the ski. That's a two minute 500 row. And that's a two minute thousand on the, on the erg. Yep. You do acid bath in 430. And now you're <gasps> doing a 130, a 130 and a 130. You're going to get on the bike and you're going to be, you're, you're like, how the hell am I going to move my body for an additional yeah. 90 seconds? Yeah. You know, and if <laughs> it's you, uh if you yeah. never looked at the at the machines, yeah. but you still gave me that intensity, there's no way you can convince me that that doesn't qualify as yeah, CrossFit. Yeah, done. Yeah. And and if and if you haven't seen that event and you want to giggle, like just go YouTube. I forget again. Yeah. I forget what year it was. Just Dubai CrossFit Championship Acid I think it's Bath 2018 or 2019. Yeah, one of those yeah. Acid Bath and yeah. watch them. Do, there is literally I, I forget that which male athletes it was but they're going and they're at about that like you know kind of four and a half minute range for this work yeah. they're going and so it's like you kind of just have to similar to how you approach fan, fran with zero regard to your personal well-being and you're just trying to outrun the discomfort you're trying to move yeah. faster than the pain yeah um and so you're going and like by the time you get off the rower your heart rate's jacked up because like your full entire body moving quarter extremity the whole way through Mm-hmm. your heart rates through the roof you hop on that concept two bike and you're trying to crank those pedals so you're probably pushing the damper up a little bit higher which gets mm. more bite through the legs oh, oh you're like instead of like the damper to three or four you're like damper to six oh. which is like you, you can still move at a decent rpm but you know it's gonna hurt yeah and you're going and then you watch these people get off the bike and they took i remember this one guy at the finish line because you had to like it was like a 20 like maybe 20 feet to the finish line like the little Something finish like that. pad yeah. And he took one step off the bite and bike and just face to floor that like his yeah. legs just shut her down. Duh, locked duh, duh, up, duh. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And then he was just like trying to like army crawl to the finish line. Cause like, his legs wouldn't work. I'm like, that's also like that. That could be a whole nother conversation there. Like 99.9% of humans will never reach that intensity to where like you feel that way. We're like, yep. I hit a point where my legs literally don't work and I have to, like log hmm. roll my way to the finish line. <laughs> well, so, t- so two quick oh. things for that. Yeah. There's a, I, I would agree with that. And I would think that that's why 99.9% of individuals, individuals don't compete in athletic events at elite levels. Right. Yes. So there's Very a, so. yes. B a. going back to what we said. So acid bath, you do acid bath at four thirty. You can't yeah. tell me you're not doing CrossFit. Right. You want to do acid bath at six minutes two minute, two minute, two minute, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, mm-hmm. you can't convince me that that also isn't CrossFit, right? Right. And all of this without the presence of clock, 
right? I'm going right. to, you know, I have an understanding about what I'm trying to accomplish and how that fits into my larger goal of increasing my work capacity. And with that in mind, and not with a subjective feel for it, but with an objective feel, this is what I'm looking to get out of that. As long as you have some way of quantifying the reason behind that, I think that what is CrossFit, thank God for this, is so much broader than mm -hmm. what so many people have been exposed to or what um, – how do I want to say this? It, it's so much broader than, for some of us, what we know. Mm -hmm. And that is a good thing. Right, because we more CrossFit for us to do, right? Um, right? And I can absolutely also see how that would be threatening to, you know, if we have established this persona of a person who does certain things and, you know, I do these things and because I do these things, it makes me a CrossFitter. <clears throat> well, the very nature of CrossFit is to hand you things you are bad at sometimes. Mm hmm and not because I want to tear you down, but because in the bigger picture, I want you to understand where your deficiencies are so that you can address those. Because by addressing those deficiencies, you move the needle even more on everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like my closing thought thought like kind of final thought on like that that what would define something as crossfit is the, the biggest kind of thing that we define as as crossfit or you know really associated with crossfit is intensity right yeah. and we've gone over like intensity can look like focus it can look like loading on a bar it can look like i'm getting kicked in the face by metabolic just death and discomfort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but also and this is also in the level one is that the intensity we're looking for we're looking to train at an intensity that is at the threshold of physical, psychological mm -hmm. tolerances, yeah. right? So some days, coming back to your point of it's why are you doing it and are you getting what you're wanting out of it? Some days, you just don't have it. You're like, um, it was a long day at work. I've slept two hours because mm -hmm. I have a newborn baby. Um, all I've eaten are um, a handful of Ritz crackers and some chocolate chips. <laughs> and this is what we're rolling with here. Yeah. And when you come in, you're probably not doing a 430 acid bath unless um, you're some type of superhuman that just like, I don't even know what it would like a, on that would to, to produce that performance. But it's like, at that point, it's like your, your goal is to get your workout in, Yeah. you know, and, and that will move the needle for you. It doesn't have to be at that breakneck, you know, maximal time that, you know, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Again, intensity is relative to physical yes. and psychological tolerances, which vary from person to person, but also person to person vary from day to day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, I'm searching for the max time or I'm keeping track of the time. Sometimes mm -hmm. what you're looking for out of it, what's going to give you the most return on that day is I'm just going to move, hopefully feel better tomorrow than I did today yeah. without putting yourself six feet under yeah. just because you think that's what is necessary. Yeah. And, you know, and again, going back to the level one, bringing in our definition of health, you know, work capacity across broad town and model domains as we age, right. If we're mm -hmm. playing the long game and I want to be as physically capable as possible for as long as possible, mm -hmm. then I have to, dial back the intensity every once in a while in order to keep myself mm -hmm. safe and injury free and consistency becomes the thing that is, you know, our, our right hand man in terms of helping us achieve those long-term goals. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's a lot packed into this discussion. And of course there could always be more. Um, I think that we settled on, we settled on a good one today and, and hopefully mm -hmm. anyone who listens or watches this gets you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of insight and a little bit of relief. Like you don't have to sell your soul to the devil every single time you, you do a workout. 
Um, but again, as, as we've recommended so often, ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing, you know, and you're never going to go wrong asking that question first. Um, nope. Final thoughts, burning desires, Mr. Kevin? No, I think we, we covered all of it. I think we covered the whole thing. Yeah, I think, we, I think that's exactly what we needed to do. So anyone who comes yeah. back next time, uh, we'll talk about something completely different in true CrossFit style. Um, and we will see or speak to you all later. Bye, everybody.